Um, thanks so much for being here, Jeff. Um, like I said, it's this is the second this is the second Twitter space that we're having together. Um, last time we had a chat with Albert about Bitcoin Olympics, uh, which matter of fact ended uh, earlier this month, uh, if I'm if I'm if I'm correct, and uh, yeah, it ended very successfully. So today we'll dive into the future of DeFi and Bitcoin. Um, but before we do so, I'd like you to give us some fun facts about Bitcoin Olympics and perhaps some information on the next hackathon that's coming up. Yeah, no, for sure. So the, the Bitcoin Olympics is a, a Bitcoin hackathon. It's, a, it's agnostic. So any technology is welcome. Um, it's totally um, like we, we it's, I guess it's technically like a nonprofit uh, for us, uh, like hackathon. We're doing it totally just to expand the community and also like help people essentially. And so we worked with several different sponsors and technologies this time, um, basically to put it together. Uh, it, it was a huge success for sure, especially like we're in, we were like right at the almost the bottom of the bear market. This is right before we hit that nice like upstream, you know, when the ETF started flying in. So we didn't have a ton of attention, got a ton of applications. A lot of good people came in, built some really, really excellent technology. I mean, really fast. And um, right now we're just kind of like looking forward to our cohort. Uh, we're basically a pre-accelerator. Essentially, what we do is we help you take your idea from uh, what well, we'll take your idea from idea to an actual uh, uh, project that can actually gain investment and seek funding. Uh, we help you to do uh, co-founder matching for a team. And then we also uh, help you to do pitching and can help you get your pitch set up and also kind of find the fulcrum of your business. And then at the very end, you'll pitch in front of several really high key investors um, during our demo day. And then also, you know, through that entire process, you get to meet a lot of really great mentors as well. So right now we don't have another hackathon lined up. Uh, I guess our next plan is to do like we have this the winter cohort lined up and then we'll be doing one in March, like again for like the having. And so I, I would imagine that we may squeeze one in like after the having, but nothing has been officially set yet. But yeah, things are going really well. We have been able to work with a lot of wonderful people. So it's been a great experience. Awesome, thank you. So, um, I, I thought I thought that you guys were planning the next hackathon as well because I think last time um, Albert mentioned uh, mentioned the next Bitcoin Olympics coming up in like I don't know five six months. Um, but but maybe I'm wrong. Um, so, anyways, um, Bitcoin Startup Lab, right? Uh, you guys are one of the strongest, uh, if I may, incubators or like you said, pre accelerators. Um, you know, in the in the Bitcoin uh, in the Bitcoin in the Bitcoin scene. And you're launching your next Bitcoin cohort program in around eight, nine days. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, actually in about, I'd say like eight, nine days, that's when the um, applications uh, will end for it. But we'll actually, we'll officially launch it, I think, towards the end of the month. And um, I think the key thing with that also is, oh, and as for the hackathon, he may have told you that he hasn't gave us any official information. So that could be a strong possibility. So you actually gave me oh, some okay. information. That, no, that's good to know. <laughs> But um, yeah, so pretty much we'll be um, doing, we're going to do it a little differently this time before I think we were doing it like six days a week. And that's actually how I actually discovered, you know, the, the Bitcoin uh, startup lab is I was part of the last cohort. They needed some help, you know, temporarily and maybe, you know, we'll see long term how it goes, but basically, you know, to help them out and to do some marketing. And um, yeah, the program itself was fantastic for me. It's definitely transformative. And that's why I'm a part of what they're doing now, because the program really helped me a ton. Um, I actually did meet co-founders and, and meet like really good people and uh, it helped me connect with a, a really larger group within the actual space. And so, um, yeah, we're definitely right now, I would say we're, we're pretty much like the, the biggest uh, pre-accelerator, but mainly only because we're, we're the only pre-accelerator in Bitcoin, you know, so far. And, um, you know, Albert, when he started it, he started it right after, you know, Casey started doing the Ordinals protocol. So we got kind of an early lead. Doesn't mean it'll always be that way. We definitely have to work hard to be able to maintain like, you know, where we're at in the market and be able to support people. But as we kind of gain understanding and, you know, add new technologies, build new relationships, we've been able to become, you know, more sustainable and help more projects. So it's, it's been a win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, and I mean, as the, as the network, uh, you know, develops, and uh, grows. I'm sure there'll be more like pre-accelerators like you guys, incubators and all these sort of things. Um, but you guys will have the advantage, right? Um, since you're already very well connected and that's why you're, you know, one of the one of the biggest ones, no matter the competition. So before we get into any details about the cohort, I think we should uh, get a big question out of the way, which is uh, why build on Bitcoin, right? 
So I'd like us to analyze the future of Bitcoin, the advantages of build, uh, the advantages of building on it, as well as the challenges, and maybe dive into into the new zk rollups, you know, which promise to add a lot of uh, a lot of efficiency and functionality to the network. So I'm not really I'm not really very very um, very well educated when it comes to the Bitcoin zk rollups. And I think they fit perfectly to the question of, uh, you know, where do you see Bitcoin in the coming years? Yeah, no, I, I agree with that 100%. And um, because we, I, I actually wasn't either, to be honest with you, until we had like Bison Labs. Um, once they came through our program, um, I was kind of like, you know, it was kind of pushed, like I, I began to learn a ton about it. So essentially just, with ZK rollups, it's basically a layer two. I mean, you still have to kind of like peg in and out of Bitcoin, but it's it's a lot cheaper and a lot faster. And so um, what Bison Labs is doing is they're building like an, a an AMN. And so essentially, you know, you'll be able to do a swap, you know, with on Bitcoin. So the idea is it's, it's supposed to be more secure, much faster. Um, it's already been developed on Ethereum beforehand. Like some of our technology has been or like, you know, some of the ideas have been done before on Ethereum. So there's already some really good use cases. They already have a test net. Um, they're now working with Pipe, which is uh, like another uh, protocol, you know, within Bitcoin. And so, um, yeah, they're going to be doing a lot of cool stuff in the near future with tokens and and a lot of different other things. That when so it's really going to add a new layer of DeFi on Bitcoin. Okay, thanks for thanks for the short, um, you know, in, uh, brief brief introduction here. Um, so let's start. On, let's start off with the future of Bitcoin. Um, building on any chain could be considered could be considered considered an investment, right? So, as of course, all project owners want to be on a chain with the highest growth potential and the highest volume. Um, and Bitcoin is not really one of the most famous solutions when it comes to building. So, what should we expect in the future? Like, um, you know, why would people be more motivated and and interested in building on 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 Bitcoin? And to kind of rephrase, what are some of the key aspects or, or points, if you want to say, um, that will contribute to the growth of it? Yeah, no, for sure. I would say, number one, it's obviously like the market leader when it comes to cryptocurrency. I mean, it's still the one that when when there's an, an increase in the actual token itself, it pulls the entire market with it. It's it's clearly the most notable um cryptocurrency also like in the world and it's also being used for some countries as an actual like almost as another layer for their currency so that's that's the main uh that's the biggest part of it is it just has that notoriety and fame um another major aspect is it, it can never be considered a security because of how it was like created by uh, satoshi nakamoto at least according to um, the united states legal system currently and so, um, and that's, and thankfully that's, so, so we'll never have to worry about any legislation with that, which is, you know, it's another, you know, it's a lot of companies don't want to have to worry about building something and, and putting, investing a lot of time and money and resources into something. And then it's completely like take pulled from them because of some, you know, some legal or some new legislation that comes out from the government. But I would say uh, the, really the biggest part is, is the competition. Um, it's really new. It's a new space. Ethereum is great and it's been around for a long time. There's a ton of really, really excellent developers and just a lot of competition there. Same thing with Solana. Some of these smaller chains, you know, obviously they're more unknown, but there's a lot of competition. So what we've seen, at least through the our startup lab, is a lot of people coming from Ethereum and they're building something similar to what they're building on Ethereum, but they're doing it on Bitcoin because there's way less competition. They could take more of the market in that space. A perfect example of this is, again, with the Bison Labs, with ZK Rollups. You know, they actually created a ZK system back in March and I think made uh, several Bitcoins from it. And they were just doing that as more of a test to kind of test the market based on technology they were working with on Ethereum. Uh, another interesting use case that we've seen like with like Liquidium, right? We've seen lending protocols for NFTs on Ethereum, even on Solana, and they've been super successful. And uh, now Liquidium is kind of doing the same thing on Bitcoin. So you, you have a lot of opportunity to take something that you know that works on another chain apply it on Bitcoin and then find a really strong measure of success. And then I'd say the last key thing that is really encouraging is a lot of these companies are being paid in Bitcoin. So uh, to be paid in Bitcoin uh, at any level, no matter what the price is, if you've been around for a while, I mean, it hit 60,000 last year. I mean, it's sitting, I think around 30,000 right now. Uh, this it's, it's one of the most lucrative payment structures you could ever ask for. I mean, you got an appreciating asset that's going to continue to grow. 
essentially as you can retain it, it just really adds a lot of value to like building on Bitcoin specifically compared to other um, chains. Right. Yeah. So from that point of view, you got a point. I mean, uh, definitely the Bitcoin is the Bitcoin leader and uh, its utility is mainly for, you know, being used as a currency to pay for things, uh, etc. So, but the chain itself is not as efficient, right? So that's why we see a lot of the builders going on the EVM side of things. So I just want to know if, you know, in the future, and uh, along with the ZK rollups, maybe uh, we're going to see the same sort of efficiency. Yeah, no, definitely. It's going to come on that side, on the layer two side, for sure. Um, we'll definitely, especially with ZK rollups, it's going to be super fast and the transaction costs are like minimal at best. So we're going to be able to set up as a strong, like kind of like Ethereum did with Polygon and now ARB. Um, you know, we're going to have like a lot of layer twos that are, we already have stacks as well and stacks. I mean, they're doing, you know, some S, um, I think it's SBTC. They're adding like that element to it. So I believe Stacks is also going to do really well in the, in the future. And they're already doing very, very well. You know, they're, they're obviously the primary layer two currently of Bitcoin. But as these other layer twos come out that are much speedier and also like secure, that's going to give us a, a market. Of, like we'll be able to compete with Ethereum, at least on a speed level, you know, essentially. Because, yeah, there's there's a major concern when it comes to just like working with the, you know, the layer one chain. But I also believe, too, to be honest, I, I do honestly believe that with a lot of these people not only working on layer uh, two, you're going to see developments on layer one because that's the ultimate goal is we, we really want to trade specifically on layer one. You know, layer two is, is supposed to be just a temporary solution, you know, for, you know, however long. And sometimes it ends up being much, much more than that. It takes a lot, lot more time. But at the same time, you know, the ultimate goal would be, you know, to have new technologies coming out that allow us to basically trade on layer one with paying a small transaction fee. I do see that in the future, but I think our fastest like uh, rate of being able to compete is going to be using layer twos in order to basically take everything off chain, you know, or not off chain, but taking everything to a layer two uh, trading and then kind of going back to a layer one. That's where I see like the immediate future. And we will definitely be competitive in that area, especially with CK and some of these other ones. I hear you. I mean, uh, Personally, we're looking very, you know, we're looking forward to it um, as we're obviously kind of investing into the chain as well. Um, not a lot of uh, auditing firms are on it at the minute. So, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll get to solve the two main issues, right, which is transaction cost and then um, speed, right? So as soon as we solve these, um, we should definitely see a lot of a lot of new builders on it um, from um, from a developer's point of view. um I think you've already mentioned a few of the advantages, but do you have any specific advantages for building on Bitcoin, but specifically from a developer's point of view? And uh, and, and what I mean is we're talking about, I mean, just go on with the advantages and I'll just move on to the to what I want to say next after. Yeah, no, I think the main thing, honestly, the main two, I would say, is obviously like, you know, the notoriety of Bitcoin itself, you know, that gives you like an advantage. So if you build a company on Bitcoin, just from what I've seen already in the past few months, you have a real opportunity to gain investment if you have something solid. Now, it's good that it's important that you have a strong team with you. You know, you definitely want to have what we say, like a hack, a hacker a, a, and a hipster and then a hustler, which is like a business person, a designer, like front end. And then, of course, like you're talking about, like uh, on the back end as well. So I think that I think gaining investment on Bitcoin is a lot easier than from what I've seen on other chains. Uh, there's a few smaller ones that I think do a pretty good job with grants. But outside of that, the investment I've seen just gained even in the bear market has been unbelievable. There's really a lot of strong support because it just goes back to when you're dealing with venture funds and Web2, you know, the thing is, is they only know Bitcoin. I mean, some may know Ethereum now because Ethereum it, it is super popular, but uh, most majority know Bitcoin. So when you're trying to like reach out to some of these bigger investors, you know, they're much more open to funding a Bitcoin company, a Bitcoin tech company compared to like an Ethereum or like a Solana, because a lot of them don't even know what those are still, which is I know it's hard to believe in 2023, but it's true. But the main thing for the number one most important is just a comp competition, because like with all blockchains, you know, there's a lot you, you can pretty much do something similar on every blockchain, some faster than others and some even better than others, so to speak, just because the technology is more advanced. But the thing is, there's not a lot of competition here for builders. So if you actually develop something, you have a much higher probability of it succeeding than compared to like another chain that's already crowded. Because when you're not dealing with like that amount of competition, 
it makes things a lot easier. And the, the cool thing about Bitcoin too, another encouraging thing that I just thought of is, you know, we're still in the beginning. We haven't even had a year of ordinals yet. And so as the technology develops and the space grows, we're heading into right now a Bitcoin halving. We already know a bunch of people are going to start coming and investing in Bitcoin and paying more attention to it. Right now is really the best time to start building and developing so that hopefully be, hopefully before or at least by the having, you have a working model where you can go and do like, you know, your seed or your series A, depending on where you're at. So I think it's it's mainly on the business side for developers. It's like I don't think you'll get much more developing here than you would like with Solidity on Ethereum or even, you know, in on Solana. I mean, I think the experience is going to be, you know, somewhat similar dealing with code, maybe a little bit trickier on Bitcoin because you're dealing with like, you know, different versions of that code, so to speak. But I, I do really see the advantage really in the competition aspect. Like you can really come over here, create something special and then be like the only one doing it. Similar to kind of where we're at, you know, it's not like, yeah, maybe we're considered the best right now, but again, we're the only ones doing it right now. And why? Because the competition aspect, if we, we would have went to Solana or Ethereum, you know, it would have been a whole nother game, you know, it would have been taken us a lot longer to grow as fast as we have and do what we've done. But the community is still pretty small. Everybody's working together and kind. And I, I think there's a lot of advantages to that. Yeah, I totally agree with you. That's a, that's a really strong point. I think the main the main and biggest advantage of Bitcoin at the minute is definitely the competition, like you said. Um, I, I also wanted to mention fundraising, but I was about to mention it uh, under the challenges section because I didn't I didn't realize that, you know, um, getting investors for, for a Bitcoin startup is uh, as easy as getting investors or as hard or whatever as getting investors for, you know, an, an EVM, an EVM, uh, an EVM project. Um, so you already said that fundraising on Bitcoin is, is way easier. Um, let's get into the challenges. Um, what, what does marketing on Bitcoin look like? And, uh, you know, what do you need to do to get the right exposure? And what does the average investor on Bitcoin you know, on Bitcoin startup kind of startups kind of kind of looks like in terms of um, do they have like very demanding expectations and, and these sort of things? I would say the challenge with marketing uh, first off is just we're a smaller space. So a ton of the marketing that you're doing is actually not going to be to the Bitcoin space. I mean, it's going to be a, a, like a, a major part of it for sure. But again, it's like you're still going to have to market to like Ethereum, I would say, like, because you're going to need to like reach a broader market. So because a lot of people who are, you know, on Ethereum use other chains as well. You know, that's how I started on Ethereum. I started using Solana. Then I heard, you know, about ordinals and got into that. And so, you know, you definitely want to start your marketing in Bitcoin, build relationships here. But you don't want to just like keep it here. You know, you have to reach because what's going to happen is, you know, you're going to meet everybody. You're going to, you know, basically exhaust all your marketing channels. And then you're going to you're still going to want to grow, you know, and right now, like I said, we're still kind of small compared to other chains. So you got to have a plan in place to start kind of reaching out to other chains with your technology to kind of, you know, encourage them to be able to trade on Bitcoin or, or do whatever, you know, you, you have to offer, whether it's like a marketplace, for example. And I, I would say for investment. Um, yeah, I do think it is easier. A, a lot of investors, they're not super demanding from what I've seen. Um, I was actually, like I said, a part of a um, a company for Demo Day. And then now that I'm kind of behind the scenes, I've seen how they work with other companies. I've seen like a lot of support from people like Soar Ventures. And um, even though Alliance Dow is, is typically ETH, they're kind of like take, putting their eye on some Bitcoin projects. And then they do Solana as well. And they do some other ones, but they're even paying attention to Bitcoin projects. And I've just seen other people like, you know, including like OCM, kind of some of the stuff they're doing and with their investment arm, you know, so to speak, like they're super, see, they have a, a really strong understanding of like the Bitcoin ecosystem. So they're very adaptable to what people are doing. And that's what I've seen mainly. There's not a lot of like new investors coming into the space. I mean, there's people with interests, like friends of friends, but a lot of the people have already been investing in projects since Ordinal started once they kind of got like a feel of what was going on. So they're just, you know, all they're looking for is the basics right now. Like if you're at the seed stage, you know, the best thing to do is have, you got to have at least a test net. You got to have a test net. You got to have your pitch together. You got to have, you know, your fulcrum. You got to be able to explain your company like with confidence and be able to show that you can, you know, what you can do in it. Now people will still invest outside of that, but it, you know, it's better to have that, especially if you're a, a new builder because you have no, you don't have any exits or, you don't have a history, right? So another, the best, the really the best of the best way is to actually have the working model up and running. Not easy to do without financing, depending on what you're building. But if you can have some form of the actual working model, I think that's obviously the best route to go. Um, right now, I'm, I'm looking at a couple companies just like I've seen who are, you know, they have investors kind of circling them and they just have a test net. 
So I'd say that's really like the sweet spot because that's the easiest thing that you can kind of complete as a developer, you know, in terms of like to raise investment, just have your pitch together, study it. If you don't know how to build a pitch, you could, like I said, go through our, our, our the Bitcoin startup lab and, you know, we'll help you to kind of like formulate all that and, and build it and like help you build your team. But if you do have your pitch and you do have your test net, you have all this stuff together, then the best thing to do is just start networking. You know, go to the events, number one, because just focus on Bitcoin. Go to the events, meet people, talk to people, you know, connect with different people. Try to get one or two advisors minimum who have experience in the space, like, you know, like a Trevor Owens or an Albert, you know, people who are connected to several investors. And then that that way they can kind of open the door for you and start to direct you. Because I know a lot of people come into the space just, you know, you're thinking of your idea. You want to build it. It could be an amazing idea and, and really has a lot of legs. But you got to have that knowledge and that network to be able to really like maximize like your idea so that you can get investment in the most efficient way possible. So you're not giving up too much equity because that's very important for your business. You know, you don't want to lose too much equity even for your investment. And so you can play the game because it, it's weird, but it's like a dance with investors. It's not like a normal, you know, hey, here's my idea. Here's the cash. It's not straightforward. You got it. There's a certain way you got to go about doing it to be able to maximize your investment, your your funding round and your cap table. So it's very important to understand all those elements when you're getting into it. Awesome. I really appreciate the I really appreciate the advice. So I kind of want to run back to the uh, fundraising. And uh, so since we got actually we got this out of the way, I want to talk about developer resources. Right. Um, how does this look? Uh, how does this look like when building on Bitcoin? Because. For example, on ETH, um, there, there, there are so many resources for devs. You know, it's it's probably not going to be as time consuming as well. So, how does this work for Bitcoin? So, there's not a, obviously there's not a ton of developer resources just because you know there's there's only like there's not there not, there hasn't been as much developer work I would say necessarily, but there's people out there like Casey, like Domo, you know, like even you know companies out there also like. Um, uh, rootstock stacks like they have resources that they're willing to share i mean to an extent you know even alex labs they've done some really good work i'd say i really enjoy what they've done and uh like they're willing to open up and share a lot of their resources it's not going to give you everything but you'll be able to at least you know you can access like githubs you can kind of look at some of the stuff that they're doing you know so you don't have to write all the code originally yourself but obviously there's going to be some stuff that's behind a wall you know if it's if it's more um you know it's business specific for what they're doing but i would say even though there's not as many resources people are more open with their resources currently um as the market grows and the competition grows that's going to change i mean to be 100 percent honest like there's there's no way people are going to share this much information when when there's way more competition but in the current stage of where it's at people are really open you can pretty much reach out to anybody if you're looking to build something and they'll, they'll share that information with you i think the easiest way like to get access to stuff if you're not sure where to go uh, in our Discord, we have a bunch of resources from developers in there that people can access. And then also um, a good thing, too, is like when we have a hackathon or when you see a hackathon, it doesn't have to be ours, but um, if you see a hackathon going on, jump into that hackathon and start connecting with other developers and they'll start to direct you towards resources. Because a lot of Discords right now are kind of like they, they hold a lot of links to different resources. You know, we don't really have a centralized space yet for it, but we're definitely like moving in that direction. Okay, cool. Awesome. I think the, you know, uh, the advice for, you know, going onto your Discord and uh, grabbing all the info is, is pretty insightful. Um, since there are not a lot of free libraries out there, like you said. Um, okay, cool. So overall, I think we kind of concluded that, you know, building on Bitcoin is, is quite, um, um, I don't know, it's, 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 it's proven to be a good solution, actually, um, in the end. As you know, I think most of us just of the stereotype that Bitcoin, you know, is not a is not a chain to build on. Um, so anyway, since we also got this out of the way, let's talk about the cohort itself. Um, should we go through it in detail? I'm not sure how much time you got because uh, I know you're kind of pressed on on calls and stuff. But I'd like to go into the cohort itself and kind of give us an idea of, of how the whole program works. Yeah, no, most definitely. No, I, I got I got time. I mean, I have at least like another 30 minutes, no problem, you know. And so I would say so essentially how the cohort works is you apply. And then um, if you get past the application part a process, which is it's not hard, you just have to fill out everything. That's the key thing. Just make sure you fill out everything. And then um, you do an interview with Albert directly. So the CEO. And then um, after that, after you get accepted, you know, then you're in obviously the cohort. Now, the current structure 
is it's going to be, it's going to run until about March. So it's four days a week now, which is I think way better because it gives people time to work. And then we're going to run some workshops outside of the class structure itself. And then from after the class structure, so you'll essentially start out with listening to mentors kind of talking about things. The first stage of what you're going to do is you're going to do like customer audits. So you're going to end interviews. You're going to start interviewing people and kind of like trying to find your fulcrum. And so um, when you're interviewing people, essentially you're trying to figure out like if, if like they, if there's a, a need or a want or a pain point for your particular business, because that's the first key to finding the fulcrum is you're fi- trying to find a pain point for people. So let's say, for example, like a pain point is like transaction speeds on Bitcoin, right? So the fulcrum for um, uh, for like a uh, Bison Labs, hey, we, we're creating a layer two, you know, to make it easier so we don't have to deal at the time is to deal with the BRC20 process because it was, it was really, really hard, you know. And so um, just to give you guys a definition of the fulcrum, because before I joined these guys, I didn't even know what that meant. So I just want to make sure I don't go too far ahead of where people are, you know. So essentially, the the definition of a fulcrum is the supporting point of like a lever. Or no, excuse me, the point against which. Oh, sorry, they don't even have the right business definition. How funny? Okay, give me some like, one second on that. No, that's so fine. I'm, Thank you. Yeah. So basically, I'm just gonna give my definition of it because I, I wanted to give the specific business definition. Okay, so they they call it. They say it's referring to a situation where a market makes a key turn. Okay. So, and it says it has other meetings, but people always use this term. So I think it's important to understand. So essentially it's like, you're trying to find something in the market where you can change something like, which is a major pain point and make it better for the user essentially. And that in turn will draw more users. So you're, you're doing your, um, your customer interviews to kind of determine that. So even before the customer interviews, I forgot to mention, you're going to do co-founder matching. We're going to put you in different rooms, with co-founder so that you can connect with people and be able to like form teams. It's always a tricky process and it's, and it's formulative. So, you know, you may team up with some people and change later on, but through that entire process, you know, the, like James, who is kind of like the program manager, he's going to be working specifically with you to make sure like, you're, like, you know, privately that everything is going how you want it, that you like, you know, the people you're working with. And if you don't try to help you connect you with other people, he's kind of the person who keeps like, you know, his finger on the pulse of what's going on through the course. After we get through that point, then we're going to move into like a, a much, much harder point, which is we're pretty much going to start kind of coming up with like our pitch, right? And so you have to actually build a pitch deck and the pitch deck is going to be scrutinized and you're going to be like, I mean, it's going to be drilled down to the most important core point, you know? And then once you have your pitch deck done, you got to start presenting. You're going to start actually doing video pitches. And then once your video pitches are screwed down to when everything's tightened up and you have like, you know, everything kind of structured, you're going to start preparing for the demo day. And the demo days where you're going to pitch in front of several investors, you have to have essentially like you ha- you're going to get rated through the entire process, like of how- where your business is at and what you're doing to make sure that you're ready for demo day. So essentially, like as you go through that process, everything that you're doing is going to be refined so that you have like the best version of what you're doing ready to present in front of investors, essentially. Now, through this entire process, the cool part is you're going to be listening to mentors and interacting with, interacting with them in and outside of class. And some of these mentors are going to be investors. So you're going to be able to build relationships during the actual cohort with investors and with people who have strong connections in the space. And it's okay if you want to start trying to take people on as advisors during this, like during the actual cohort. Because I know several businesses that took on really significant advisors and really helped them when it came to demo day. So essentially, once you get to demo day, you present and then, you know, hopefully you raise, you know, a, a, a nice chunk of money. You know, I, I think I've seen originally like there was raises between like 50, it's, it's at the seed phase, but between 50,000 to 250,000, depending on your product or project, maybe higher. And, but the cool thing is even when you're doing your raises, like Albert will help you and like other people will be helping you to make sure that you don't give up too much equity for that. Because, you know, it's just exciting when you hear a big number thrown at you, but you got to remember, you know, your company, the valuation of your company may only be like a million to 10 million initially. But if you're building something really strong, I mean, within weeks, even months, you know, it could be at a hundred million. And then, you know, you just don't want to give up too much equity for when you do your next raise. So we're definitely like going to help educate you, help you understand how to like form a strong project and a strong team you know, to help you to like have all the tools to be able to pitch. And an, a really cool uh, metric that we have is every project that's gone through our pre-accelerator 
and has gone to an, another accelerator has raised funding and it's a hundred percent on that. So that every, so we've always given the tools to prepare people to be able to raise funding, even if it's not right away, you know, in a future accelerator. So it's, it's pretty cool. Man, I love what you guys are doing. And uh, you, you, previously, you previously mentioned that you've been through one cohort, right? The, 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 the last cohort, if I'm, if, I'm not, uh, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. I was actually part of the summer cohort and then they were kind of hiring for a position. And, you know, I was like, you know, I was interested because I saw what they're doing. I, I thought it was only going to last a month. So, which was cool. And then so far it's, it's been about two, which is even better. And so, and, and maybe uh, more in the future, you know, we'll see, but uh, yeah, it was, it was just a good opportunity. And um, you know, I was working with a business uh, on Ethereum, actually, we had an Ethereum business in there and they're still doing pretty well. They're doing pretty well. They have a marketplace already built. It's called Ordex, uh, a really good company, but um, I had to leave that in order to do this, unfortunately, because, you know, it's just, you got to have your focus in one place. And so, but um, yeah, I, I saw, you know, through the, the lens of Ordex, you know, we, we started off like I met um, the, the founder uh, through the program and then we also got other people and um, we actually had a working marketplace. It's actually on ETH scriptions, which is, it's a little bit different. It's kind of like an inscription form on Ethereum, which is interesting. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a really, really unique process. We connected with great people. We took on advisors, just like I was telling you. Um, one of those advisors was Maddie Tokenomics, you know, like we're like, we're still working. Like I believe they're still working to finalize the details of that, but he helped us a lot through the process. He still advised us without becoming an official advisor. So he was really cool about that. But um, yeah, no, it, it opened so many doors. I mean, even like I said, being a part of the program now, if I was to form my own business, I have such a different understanding of how to do it much more high level. I made a ton of connections. I learned a ton like about all the technologies on Bitcoin And it's put me in a position to be able to connect and actually be knowledgeable in the space. So I, I honestly, like I would say just from like a personal perspective, I encourage anybody to get involved with it. it it's a, it's a small ask for a really, really major benefit. It's, it's a few months time and you know, it could completely change your life. Like it's done for me. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it really sounds very attractive itself. You guys, you know, you guys are really helpful when it comes to it. Um, how, how, how much of an expert um, do you need to be to actually apply for it? And kind of get us through the criteria for accepting applications? Or is it just random? Yeah, no, it's, uh, I mean, I think like one of the things he looks for is if you've had some history with starting up businesses, but you don't have to be an expert at all. I was definitely not an expert. I've had, I had, I think I had about two or three startups, maybe more. I just, I think I listed two or three and I was pretty much working like web two and it. I mean, I have some degrees and stuff like in different areas. So I have some, you know, some, uh, a strong background in like development more on the mobile application side. But, um, I think, uh, from what I've seen, like, obviously if you just have, if you have the right idea, you have the hunger and you're willing to be coachable and teachable, I think you can be successful in it. I, I, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to, because like I said, when I came into it, I didn't know what a fulcrum was. I didn't know what a cap table was. Um, I had heard of seed series A, B and C funding, but I didn't know the specifics of it. Um, I wasn't even like, I didn't understand how to sell equity, how to gain, gain equity. You know, I like, I'd heard of it again. Like I understood the principle of it, but you know, it'll, it'll pretty much take you from, you know, like someone like me who, had a history of doing like startups and working in web three here and there, just doing my own stuff. But at the same time, I never really had like made that exit or that strong business that was super successful. And, you know, it'll, it'll make you way sharper and way stronger so that when you get out, like I, I have no doubt if I started a business now that I'd be able to raise funding. And I, like, I owe that entirely to the Bitcoin startup uh, lab, a hundred percent. Right. I think what's most reassuring about the program itself is that you can actually attract an investor. You know, uh, you can you can attract your mentor as an investor, which, you know, if he obviously likes what you're building, then he's going to connect you to like, you know, many more investors and, and, and kind of give you all the um, resources, you know, for getting your product out there, um, which is pretty reassuring, in my opinion, like sounds pretty interesting. Sounds pretty cool. OK, I think we kind of covered everything around the cohort side of things. Um, and, uh, building on Bitcoin. I'm not sure if you want to add anything, Jeff, let me know. Yeah. I mean, pretty much I'll just kind of throw it out there. Like, you know, for all you guys here, you know, who are builders or who've been working in the space for a long time, it's like, uh, you know, we're, we're really just at the beginning of what's about to happen. So, you know, like you're, you're in a good place, you know, obviously, 
with uh, all the the movement in Bitcoin lately, it's easy to be encouraged by what's going on, and you should be. But um, this is just like a, a small sample of, of what's to come. You know, if you've seen it before, you know exactly what I'm saying here. Like, uh, you, we're gonna see things burst open in a way that's never been done before. And I think the biggest thing to look for, besides just all the cool stuff that's being built now, is once we hit get into the DeFi market on Bitcoin, you're gonna see a lot more exposure. So, and you're going to see a lot of things change. And once we kind of settle on certain technologies, I know we have a lot of stuff coming out outside of ordinals now, but once we start to settle, whether it's runes or, you know, whatever it ends up being like all this stuff is just going to maximize our growth. So I, I would definitely say we're just at the beginning. We're past the birth cycle, obviously, you know, now we're walking around a little bit, kind of getting things going, but our growth cycle is, is going to be, you know, it's going to be, it's going to ramp up here in the next coming months. So it's very, it's going to be exciting to work with all you guys. And I'm glad to see what all you're doing and building. And I think it's a great opportunity for anyone listening, you know, to go to go ahead and apply um, for this cohort because as you know the network grows and uh, develops and we see a lot more a lot more volume on it, then I also assume that you guys are going to be way more busier, right? And you're going to have way more way more applications and it's going to be way harder to actually get on board it. So here's your opportunity because I think within the you know coming year or even years, um, Bitcoin is going to be way stronger. Yeah, like, 100%. stronger. You know, stronger, stronger as in a solution, you know, to build. So, because it's obviously way, way, way too strong uh, now as well. So, <laughs> okay, cool. Awesome, Jeff. Uh, it was a pleasure having you here today, man. And, uh, you know, just give us any updates you have with a, with a cohort. We're happy to help you and assist you if, you know, if you need anything. Um, and uh, we'll stay in touch. We'll have more space in the future. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, uh, Cyberscope, and, and thank you so much, Andreas, for having us here and, and having me here, and I really appreciate your time and definitely looking forward to it, man. Thank you. Awesome. It was a pleasure, man, and uh, I wish you guys the best with your, you know, with your program starting up. Have a great Friday. See you all. We'll see you on the next Twitter space coming up next week, probably. Bye-bye.